Okay, let's talk about properties of matter. So now that we've discussed what kinds of matter there are and what defines one type of matter versus another, such as element versus compound and whatnot, now we need to talk about how we define the way matter behaves. So if we're going to classify matter, we need to talk about it in ways that use well, these vocabulary terms, as in like quantitative information where you put a specific number on something, a certain number of grams or a certain number of millimeters for like size or centimeters or micrometers or whatever, or things that are measured specifically with numbers, or qualitative where we describe a property of something as in like the color, the size, the shape, the odor, the texture, the condition, etc. As in like it's red, it's rough or smooth, or it's green, or it's blue, or it bubbles, or stuff like that. So anyway, uh, aside from these terms that describe the ways that we would describe matter, the physical properties are is what we need to get into next. So when we talk about the properties of it, we're going to talk about physical versus chemical properties. So when we talk about physical versus chemical properties of this, this is going to be like the big theme of this notes here, is let's start with the physical properties. It's what you can measure without changing the identity. So you can measure what color it is by looking at it, or the odor by smelling it, or the taste by, well, don't do this to chemicals, but uh, tasting it, uh, etc. All these other things you can measure without interacting with the substance directly necessarily, um, which is to say without changing the identity. Um, this is the idea of like, this is one of the things we use to describe how matter is. So, states of matter, the physical forms in which all matter exists on Earth, you measure the states of matter, or the states of matter are physical properties, as in a solid, a liquid, or a gas that is a physical property at a certain particular temperature, at least. Um, now, compare these physical properties. What if you have a physical change in something? So a physical change would be like a change that occurs in the physical appearance of the substance but does not change its chemical identity. So melting, boiling, freezing, evaporating, dissolving, condensing, breaking, splitting, grinding, cutting, or crushing. Let's define something. When we say chemical identity, we mean to say is, I don't even know what I was trying to draw there. Chemical identity means the formula, the chemical formula. So the chemical formula is something's chemical identity. If you take an ice cube and melt it, H2O is in the ice cube. H2O is what you get in water. If you boil it, H2O liquid becomes H2O gas, same chemical formula. Freezing it, H2O liquid becomes H2O solid. It's still the same chemical identity. Dissolving something doesn't change its chemical identity. If you dissolve salt in water, that is a physical change because it's salt plus water makes salt water. You can evaporate them out and it becomes the exact same thing again. Breaking, cutting, splitting, splitting, whatever. If you grind ice into like powder, it's still H2O. So none of these things change the chemical formula. That's why they are all physical changes. Now let's contrast that with chemical properties and changes. So a chemical property is the ability to undergo a, a transformation to a different substance. So this is only, you only know whether a chemical can do a reaction. And in other words, it's ability to have a particular reaction. And you only know that by changing its identity, by having it actually do the reaction. You can't find out whether something's flammable until you light it on fire. Uh, you can't find out whether something reacts until it reacts. So the only way to find this out is to make its chemical identity change. Whereas you can find out its physical properties just by looking at it or measuring it or whatever. Sorry, I went to go back to here. Physical properties by looking at it, measuring it, whatever. So physical properties versus chemical properties is a minor, is, I shouldn't say minor. It's one of the things we want you to be aware of, but chemical change versus physical change is the bigger main thing we want you guys to get out of this. Physical change is when you alter it in a way that it does not change the chemical formula, whereas a chemical change does alter the chemical formula. When you burn something, Wood is no longer wood, it becomes carbon dioxide and H2O, or iron plus oxygen becomes iron oxide, i.e. rust. And so this is a different chemical formula than what it started as. This is a different, making a different chemical formula than what it started as. 
Cooking the egg alters the chemical form. It makes a little protein stick together. That's why it turns solid. So all of these things change the chemical formula of something, whereas none of these things change the chemical formula of something. So again, physical changes alter the chemical, do not alter the chemical formula, and chemical changes do alter the chemical formula. They change it. So chemical reactions. I did mention that chemical properties are the ability to undergo a particular reaction. So what's a reaction? A chemical reaction is the process by which the atoms of one or more substances are rearranged to form different substances. In other words, the atoms bond to something else or come apart or come together with something different or whatever. You change the chemical formula of something. That's a chemical reaction, also known as a chemical change. Chemical properties can only be observed when a substance undergoes a chemical change. Like I mentioned earlier, you don't know if it's flammable until you try it until you set it on fire. You don't know if it'll react until it reacts. So you can only can measure chemical properties by making the chemical reaction actually happen. An example of chemical change is photosynthesis because it takes these substances and combines them to make totally different substances with totally different properties. Okay, the photosynthetic chemical reaction can be shown by writing the element symbols for each compound. So these are the chemical reaction conventions we're going to be using for writing chemical reactions many times through the year, where we write the stuff you begin with, the products at the beginning, and um, the stuff you end up with. The re Sorry, I can't even talk right. You write the reactants at the beginning, you write the products at the end, you write these chemical formulas. These are called coefficients, these are called subscripts, more about those coming up later. But yes, your reactants, which you have at the beginning, they are your ingredients. And this, this is what they are in this case, but it can be whatever's on this side of the arrow. The arrow shows the actual reaction. So this is what you start with. The arrow points to what you end with. And then uh, substances to the right of the arrow are the products. That's what's made or produced. And I'm not sure if it's on here, but technically we call this as the yield sign, but everyone just calls it the arrow. So whatever is good. Um, recognizing chemical changes. How can you tell whether or not a chemical change has taken place? So you're in the lab and you saw a change happen. Is it chemical or is it physical? Indications that a chemical change that can ha may have happened are not for sure, not concrete, not guaranteed in and of themselves. Like these examples are not in and of themselves a guarantee. There are certain cases where a physical change can transfer energy, but the things you're about to see, if you see them, it's a pretty good sign that there's quite possibly a chemical reaction going on. So transfer of energy means energy given off in the form of heat or light, such as a fire. A change in color. If the molecular structure, if a chemical reaction happens and you alter the chemical formula, that changes the structure of the molecule, it will therefore reflect light differently and appear to be a different color. So a change in color is an indication of potentially seeing a chemical change. Precipitate. So if you put two liquids together and a solid forms, you may have just had a chemical reaction. If a gas is produced, as in you put two substances together and they start to bubble and fizz, that means producing a gas, there's a pretty good chance you may have had a chemical reaction. Are any of these a guarantee of a chemical reaction? No, there are physical changes that could potentially make any of these, but it's a pretty good starting point if you see this to be like, hmm, we may have had a chemical reaction and then investigate further. So um, another thing we're gonna be talking about this class, the law of conservation of mass is the idea that uh, stuff doesn't just appear or disappear in the universe. Every, all the matter that exists has always existed and always will, and, and there is some exceptions to that, like the matter can be converted to energy, energy can be converted to matter equals mc squared, but that takes like an exploding star or fusion reactions, and so under normal earth conditions, what matter you have is the matter that will always be. So what that means is matter is neither created nor destroyed. Mass cannot be or destroyed. So you have a cute little cartoon. Um, so you may be old enough to remember having giant TVs like that. But anyway, it's, it gets at the idea that mass is neither created nor destroyed. It's always there. So if it appears that something disappeared. It didn't really. It just turned into some other form of matter that maybe you're not keeping track of. So conservation of matter and chemical reactions. In a chemical reaction, the mass of the products is always equal to the mass of the reactants. So what the idea is here is if you set wood on fire, 
And if you measure the mass of the oxygen that reacted with it, yes, air has mass. So if you measure the mass of this and the mass of this, it is going to be exactly equal to the mass of the ashes left over plus the CO2 plus the H2O plus any other products that may have come out of it. The total mass will not change. And physical change is the same thing. So remember, if you melt ice, this is solid H2O, this is liquid H2O, same chemical formula either way. The concept is that if you melt it or grind it or crush it or whatever it may be, it will not produce any change in mass because you have neither created or destroyed matter because as far as we're concerned it is not possible to create or destroy matter. So that about covers that ladies and gentlemen. Uh, aesthetics.